Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, September 22nd. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've had a wonderful weekend. We hope that you're enjoying the cooler mornings because the afternoons are super hot now. Yeah, very muggy this morning, though, down to the low 70s for a change, which was kind of a nice break. And there were some other reasonably impressive lows this morning, Justin. Yeah, dry air does uh, good things when it's here because it drops those temperatures in the morning. And it felt so great uh, here in San Antonio. We dropped down to 70 degrees some places in the 60s this morning and we've got some more dry air down the line. You're going to like some of the morning lows, I think, as we head into next week. Let's show you the numbers, though, this morning. 70 here in town, 67 at Randolph, 68 at Stinson, 66 at Pleasanton and Uvalde. It got all the way down to 60 in Kerrville. Man, we'll take it. Case that 12 hour forecast today, 90 noontime, sunny skies, so the dry air as it always does, cools us down in the morning, but we see those really warm temperatures in the afternoon. 98 degrees by 4 p.m., 96 by 6 p.m., and uh, Friday night, or not Friday night, Thursday night football is going to be a hot one tonight. Here's a look at the weather headlines, and there's a lot of them, a lot going on here in the weather department, and uh, here's what we're looking for. Dry heat today and near records, I think, next couple of days, and the fall equinox happens today. We're going to explain that. What does it mean? Also, we've got an update on the Caribbean, a lot going on down there. Where does that potential system that we've been talking about, where does it go? We'll have an update there for you here in just a few minutes as well. But now let's get over to Steven and check in on those roadways this morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Justin. Well, things look like they've dwindled down there at Transguide. 10 days of all, pardon me, you can see there, Things aren't really moving too bad. In fact, some areas it's pretty much just cleared out. But of course, we know that we still have a few lingering problems in and around the Alamo City. Let's go ahead and take you to the map. One of those areas that we're tracking closely here, 35 southbound at Evans Road. Notice how we see that red buildup out there, and that's because southbound 35 hundreds and thousands of vehicles make their way through in the area each and every day. So of course, anytime there's an incident that pops up, it really does hinder the commute. So we'll go to our friends at Transcat on the phone, see if we can get a view of the area, show you the conditions, but nonetheless, prepare for some slowdown and pack that patience with a cup of coffee. Let's take a drive now back over here to I-10 here in town where we see this crash. It's still lingering around. It was reported in the eastbound lanes of I-10. It's not far from ProBent, but the buildup isn't taking place in the eastbound lanes. In fact, we're seeing it going west up 35 to I-10. So just watch out in that area. You will see a little bit of a buildup, but nothing too bad. Now with a quick bird's eye view of the metro area, just a lot of those active construction spots that continue to take place. So just prepare and plan your commute ahead of time. Head over to ksat.com slash traffic for more information on that. But as we take it back to Transguide, things are moving just fine, but it does look like we may have had a stalled vehicle out over there off 281. But we'll watch the roads closely, and as always, make sure you do the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Top stories are following this morning. San Antonio police still searching for the driver responsible for a deadly crash last night. It happened over on the west side near Culebra and Arcadia Creek. According to police, a man was riding his bicycle when he was hit. He died at the scene from his injuries. Police have not made any arrests at this time, but say when they do find the driver, that person will be charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Two San Antonio police officers are doing okay this morning after their vehicle was rammed by a suspect driving a stolen car last night. It happened around 1030 at the intersection of Seralvo and Couples Road over on the west side. SAPD says a street crimes unit was running a plate of a stolen vehicle on Guadalupe when the driver rammed the police unit and then drove off. The officers followed the suspect until they eventually crashed into a white vehicle in that intersection. Two people inside that vehicle had to be cut out by firefighters and taken to the hospital. The suspect was also taken to the hospital. Well, there is other news. And to get you caught up, here's today's Night at Nine. Cartels from Mexico are now considered foreign terrorists in Texas. Governor Abbott signed an executive order making the declaration yesterday. He blamed the cartels for the growing fentanyl crisis in Texas. Abbott says he wants to reclassify fentanyl overdoses as fentanyl poisoning and charge those who provide the drug to someone who dies of an overdose with murder. President Joe Biden spoke before world leaders to criticize Russian President Vladimir Putin and his seven month long invasion of Ukraine. Biden's U.N. speech fueled by Putin's latest threat of a nuclear response, despite repeated warnings from the U.S. and NATO against just that. At the same General Assembly, Ukraine's president called for more just punishment against Russia. 
Former President Donald Trump is responding to two investigations that took major steps forward yesterday. A federal appeals court panel ruled the Justice Department can resume its criminal review of classified documents seized from his Florida home. Meanwhile, in New York, the state attorney general filed a civil suit against Trump and others for fraudulently obtaining loans by allegedly inflating the value of his assets on applications, among other schemes. Virginia Thomas has agreed to an interview with the House Select Committee investigating the Capitol insurrection. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas will be interviewed in the coming weeks. Thomas's attorney says his client wants to clear up any misconceptions about her work relating to the 2020 election. U.S. Army is working to improve how it handles sexual assault and harassment. They've established a special trial council and have also removed commanders from making decisions related to the prosecution of certain crimes like rape and sexual assault. These changes come in response to the 2020 Fort Hood report, which was ordered after the death of several people on base, including 20-year-old soldier Vanessa Guillen. Interest rates heading up again after the Federal Reserve gave a key rate another three quarters of a percent boost in an effort to cool inflation. And several of your bills may be increasing too. Experts say the first place you may see it is on your credit card statement as rates rise. And while savings accounts will get a slight boost, the cost of borrowing to buy a house also going up. Oil prices are rising a bit today after slipping following the Fed's interest rate boost. Benchmark oil prices fell to nearly two-year lows amid worries that higher interest rates may push global economies into a recession. The recent rise in mortgage rates is a big reason the housing market slowed for the seventh straight month in August. The National Association of Realtors says sales of previously owned homes fell 0.4% compared to July and were down nearly 20% compared to a year ago. Walmart is gearing up for the holiday rush with plans to hire about 40,000 people, most of them seasonal workers, but that's a decrease from 2021. This time last year, Walmart was looking to hire about 150,000 people. That's today's nine at nine. And we are counting down to the start of the big give later today. Big Give is 24 hours of online giving to local nonprofits in South Central Texas. Since 2014, over 262,000 donors have given over $35 million to local nonprofits through the Big Give, making it one of the most successful giving days in the country. David Sears joins us now from the Screaming Goat out in Spring Branch with a preview of this fundraiser. Good morning, David. Good morning. The goats aren't screaming yet because it's so early. It's just after 9 o'clock. But believe it or not, there are goats over there at the Screaming Goat. Just not making a whole lot of noise right now. But the Screaming Goat is making a lot of noise because they're getting things started early for the big give today. Of course, it officially doesn't start till this evening at 6 o'clock. But the Screaming Goat has teamed up with SJRC Texas to get things rolling a little early this morning. And joining us now is Lauren Sides from SJRC Texas. So it's, it's early, but we're getting a jump on things. We're not goats. We're not that early. So tell us a little bit about SJRC Texas, first of all, then we'll get into some of the reasons why this is such a big day. Yes, so SJRC Texas, we provide healing, hope, and a home to children and camp and families in the foster care system. Um, we have a campus here in Bulverde and one in New Rumpels where we really provide therapeutic care along the journey of healing for all of these abused, abandoned, or neglected children. A huge day for nonprofits. Why is this day so big for SJRC Texas and some of the other nonprofits? Yes, we are one of many nonprofit organizations trying to help provide you know a better future for uh, generations to come and really this experience allows us to provide a sense of normalcy to abused and abandoned children and so you know whether it be going to the San Antonio stock show and rodeo to the movies or any sort of fun family activity for our vulnerable children and that just tries to give them as you as you mentioned that that sense of normalcy so that's what is so important about a day like today because those funds are able to help with these uh, with the payments and, and help with the, the cost of, of things that just get these kids back to normal because we know that a lot of these kids 
things are tough. Yes, absolutely. It even goes to help paying for diapers and wipes or even a driver's license. You know, sometimes a lot of children in the foster care system don't have the opportunity to even have a state issued ID. So help provide and offset those costs for us. It really makes a huge difference. That's some things that people don't really think about is, is a driver's license for a 16 year old who's, who's in that foster care system. So that's what this money goes to. Yes, that's, absolutely. That's unbelievable. So it's a huge day for you guys. We hope that uh, folks will come out here to the Screaming Goats from 9 to noon. They're going to be giving part of the proceeds of, of whatever they sell today to SJRC Texas. So, And you've been working with some other organizations so far, so getting a little jump on things today. But uh, come on out to the Screaming Goat. Watch some goats scream. What else can you do? Have some coffee? Have some food, whatever, whatever you want. And we're going to be talking to some folks from the Scream of God as to why they've uh, teamed up with SARC Texas coming up in the next half hour. Or so, but we're not waking up the goats yet. Not doing that. Not yet. No, be, care be nice. careful and quiet out there. <laughs> Thank you, David Sears. By the way, Screaming Goat is out off of 281 on Highway 46 east of 281 itself. 908, 75 degrees, still ahead. We are looking ahead to our new KSET community event happening in October, the Light the Night Walk. Max Massey will tell us a little bit about the mission and how you can get involved. Plus, 12 minutes past the hour, local veterans will soon be able to express themselves through music. UTSA School of Music is starting a new program where they will provide free music lessons to veterans, and it will be led by a former commander of the Air Force Band of the West. And that is a music organization with an outstanding record of achievement. Tiffany Huertas joins us now from UTSA. And Tiff Tiffany, who can join these classes? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Any local veteran can join, and they do not have to have any musical experience to participate. And check this out. This morning, we're with UTSA's Boom Squad, which is very exciting morning for us. Some of these students will be involved in this program. And to talk a little bit more about this, we have Gary and Tracy with the university. Good morning. Talk to us about this program and how did it start? Good morning. Um, thank you for, for talking to us today. So New Horizons has been around for 31 years as an organization providing um, free, uh, well, actually, uh, we are providing a free service for veterans here, free musical instruction. Most New Horizons bands around the country are just open to any adult to participate, but we wanted to do something really special in San Antonio because we are a military city USA. So we are providing free instruction. The director, Dean Zarnbinski, is a former commander of the Air Force Band of the West. Um, and so we are excited to provide this opportunity for veterans to get together, to experience camaraderie, to learn something new. We'll be providing instrument loans to everybody and music and helping everybody to just have a great time learning how to play music together. Amazing. And Gary, this is personal and something very special for you. How can you explain that? Well, absolutely. Um, I retired from the Air Force after 24 years and, and the, in the band, travel all around the world, and I saw the power of music and how that builds bridges and brings people together. And even me, uh, what I still miss is my friends and making music together. And that's what even they, this, this Boom Squad, these are my students, and they do an amazing job. And I think there's friendships here that have been built, and that's what we're trying to do. You get out of the Air Force, I got out after 24 years, and that's what I missed is the relationships and the camaraderie, and that's what music does. And that's what we're hoping to do for these veterans. And the students will also be participating. In Absolutely, that. they're going to help teaching and doing all kinds of all kinds of stuff. And again, it's that multi generational relationships, and again, building bridges through the power of music. Can you play for us something you you have this? Absolutely, morning? we have a great uh, in the theme. We have a great John Philip Sousa march called the Black Horse Troop. This is the UTSA Boom Squad. this morning. We're going to have more from them coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. It sound good. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. 
Justin is here and has lots to talk about today. Where do you begin? Well, we're going to start with the changing of the seasons. Okay, it is happening today. I know, I know it does not feel like it at all, but fall, we welcome it in tonight. Uh, just after 8 o'clock, the autumnal equinox. And we see this because, of course, the Earth is tilted. The Earth's axis is tilted neither toward or away from the sun. So you get nearly equal amount of daylight and darkness at all latitudes. And we enter into fall with some very hot temperatures. But yes, that happens tonight, uh, right around 8.03, 8.04 uh, this evening. Uh, while we do that, we're going to be dealing with some pretty hot temperatures. The reason for that, our ridge of high pressure that we've been talking about the last couple of days, the heat high, it is intensifying. I think today is going to be hot. Today could be even a little bit, or tomorrow could be even a little bit hotter. And as we look at the numbers this afternoon, uh, 96, 97 here in San Antonio, Austin's going to be up near 100. And I think there'll be some spots across East Texas where uh, we get into that range. And then tomorrow, we're thinking uh, 98, 99 here in San Antonio, perhaps into the triple digits there around Austin. So a lot of heat. The good news here that heat high finally moves out of the way on Saturday. We get some clouds as a little disturbance develops in Mexico. Not any rain, but some cloud cover that should make it slightly cooler. So if you have weekend plans, well, it's still going to be hot, but at least temperatures come down a little bit Saturday and Sunday. Here's a look at the forecast ice today. We're thinking 98 here in San Antonio eventually this afternoon. 97 Elmendorf, 94 Ferrex Ranch, 94 in Bernie. So a lot of places are going to be hot, and I would not be surprised if we see uh, some triple digits on the map later today. What about Friday night football? I keep saying Friday night football. It's Thursday, but there is football tonight. Thursday night football. There we go. 94 degrees at kickoff, 87 at halftime. Be careful out there. This heat is no joke, and that's going to be the case tomorrow, too. When these football games start, it is going to be very toasty. Uh, sunsets around 730, by the way. There's the scene outside. We've got perfectly clear skies. 75 degrees at the airport, 79 Stinson. We're up from that 70 degree low this morning, 77 Kelly, 75 over there at Randolph. Still some 60s on the map as you get up towards Fredericksburg and Junction. Kerrville also checking in at 67, but everyone else has made it into the 70s at this point. That includes most of Bear County, and we're closing in on 80 down there at Stenson. Dew points, they came down a little bit this morning, which is why we saw the cooler numbers. They've risen just a hair. We're in the upper 60s. There are some 70s as far as the dew points are concerned. But I think these numbers really do come down this afternoon. Dry air mixes down to the surface, and we get dew points in the 50s, mid-50s, in fact, by 5 p.m. So, yes, it will be hot, but it'll be more of a dry heat, and this evening should feel pretty good. Meantime, let's go out to the tropics. Of course, we've got Fiona. We're still watching this. This is a powerful storm. Category 4, you can see the eye very clearly. Winds are at 130 miles per hour, gusting to 160. This passes by Bermuda sometime tomorrow, tonight into tomorrow. And then this moves north. It'll bring a lot of wind uh, to Nova Scotia and parts of Canada as it moves in that direction. Meantime, we, we talked about Gaston. Not a problem. It's a non-issue for us as it moves north and east. But we've got several systems here in the Atlantic lining up. 60% chance of development, 30% chance of development, and of immediate concern, this system here in the Caribbean. Still looks unorganized, but the models uh, really do want to push this forward and develop it as we get into the next couple of days. And so let's look at the models here, the computer models, and it takes it into the uh, middle part of the Caribbean by Monday morning. And then by the middle part of next week, it moves it into the Gulf. That much we have confidence with that, that it will indeed move into the Gulf. But from there, there's a lot of questions. And because we don't have a lot of data yet with this storm, and we'll be getting more in the coming days, we'll have a better idea of where it should go. But I would say this, everyone in the Gulf Coast who lives on the Gulf Coast should keep close watch on this, uh, depending on how this system evolves. And we'll continue to give you updates here over the next few days. 99 degrees tomorrow, 95 Saturday, 96 Sunday, 95 on Monday, still a hot day, small chance for showers, front comes through, and next week, a lot of low humidity. Look at the morning low Wednesday, 64. That sounds a lot better. Yes. So we're getting there. We're that's, getting there. That's yeah. more like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you keep those forecasts coming, your job is intact. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I feel better now. As if we had that kind of power. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. You got it. 920, 77 degrees. And after the break, we're going to tell you about life and night and how you can get involved.
On November 2nd, the traditional Mexican holiday, Day of the Dead, or Dia de los Muertos, is celebrated and has now grown in popularity across the United States. Dia de los Muertos is not to be confused with Halloween or All Saints Day. It is the day that many believe the border between the spirit and the living world dissolved and families welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives. The tradition is said to be a combination of Mesoamerican, European religion, and Spanish culture. On Dia de los Muertos, families visit the grave sites of their loved ones or create altars called ofrendas, where they offer food, drink, and other offerings to help their loved ones' souls on their journey to their final resting places. Today, the tradition has become very popular due to its rise in pop culture and being recognized by UNESCO. In 2016, Mexico City held its first ever Dia de los Muertos parade, with cities in the United States doing the same the following year. While the celebration of the holiday continues to evolve, the core traditions have remained the same for thousands of years by portraying death in a positive way and part of the human experience. Nine twenty-four. the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is a global leader in the fight against cancer. Their mission is to cure leukemia, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and melanoma. Light the Night is an annual event that helps with that mission. Max Massey shows us during Light the Night as we gather as a community to celebrate, honor, and remember those touched by blood cancers. Our honored hero this year, uh, his name is Jarvis Henderson Jr. Um, he was diagnosed at five years old with pre-B acute lymphoblastic leukemia, um, and he was diagnosed right at the beginning of the pandemic. Jarvis Anderson is just a child, and he had to start fighting cancer at the age of five years old. He's one of too many people around the world who have been diagnosed with a form of blood cancer. Every three minutes, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. And every nine minutes, someone unfortunately loses their battle. Um, right now, about 1.4 million people in the U.S. are either living with or are in remission from a leukemia, a lymphoma, or a myeloma. You can step up and help out with research, advocacy, and families, all at this year's Light the Night. As we bring communities together to celebrate those who are fighting the, de the disease and to honor those we have lost. The event is October 8th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at Hemisphere, and there is still time to put a team together. These teams and their communities will light the night with us at our walk where we gather together to celebrate, honor, and remember those touched by cancer. And at that walk, each uh, each walker carries an iconic lantern. And those white lanterns are carried by survivors and patients. The red lanterns are carried in support of patients and just wanting to find a cure. And the gold lanterns are carried in remembrance of those we have lost. All the money raised will go to research for a cure, advocacy to make treatments more affordable, and support for patients and their families. We would really love to see is for uh, teams to register for Light the Night. It is absolutely free to do. We're a family-friendly event. Um, and every dollar raised, we cannot emphasize, makes a big impact in our patients' lives. As for Jarvis, he is the honored hero this year, and he is beating cancer one day at a time. He is going to get his chemo port removed. So that means he's officially done with his treatment. He is in remission from cancer. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. You can find more information about Light the Night on our website right now. You can also join our team by scanning the QR code on your screen. Again, the Light the Night walk will take place on October 8th. Time right now, 927, 77 degrees. There is much more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including why political science experts and migrants say the influx of people coming to the U.S. is more than just political or crime related. Plus one man sharing his battle with brain cancer with fellow patients to help spread the message of hope as we get ready for the Head for the Cure race here in San Antonio this weekend. That story coming up after the break. This Saturday is the ninth annual Head for the Cure 5K run and walk here in San Antonio. It raises awareness and funding for brain cancer research and initiatives. A Kansas City man who bravely shared his battle in an intimate documentary will be here to meet fellow survivors and give them a message of hope. RJ Marcus spoke with him about why he wanted the world to see his fight up close and personal. I knew that if I wasn't completely vulnerable, completely open, I was doing myself and the project and injustice, but every other survivor that could potentially see that. DJ Stewart was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2019 and told he had between a year and 18 months to live. The rarest, most aggressive form of brain tumor, 11, 18 months. Uh, but here I am th three and a half years later, 
no real deficits. Stewart wanted to share his story after his diagnosis. One of his best friends, Ryan Lavelle, filmed a documentary about DJ's intimate journey. The whole process of making it and what has come from it, I can never imagine not giving it everything. And the video is called Rare Enough. If I'm rare enough, so are you. The film chronicled DJ's treatments and the daily struggle to fight brain cancer. Just as important, the people that supported him every day. We had an entire city behind us and then it just it just keeps growing. But my rocks, my direct family, my wife, mom, dad, in-laws, grandma. And that's the support that DJ now wants to spread. He connected with Head for the Cure, bought an RV, and now travels to different events and gatherings, speaking to other survivors and families going through the same thing. But I can't put a word on it. It's just an honor that I never could quantify in a million years. DJ and his wife will be in San Antonio for Saturday's Head for the Cure, another chance to talk about his story of survival and give a message of hope to others. It keeps working. I'm still here. I'm still doing incredible things that I would have never thought I had the honor to. So I just keep going. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And this race is especially close to our hearts here at KSAT because of our former news director, Jim Boyle, who was diagnosed with glioblastoma and passed away. Jim's death was a gut punch. His daughter helped kick off the event outside the KSAT studios back in 2014. Since then, it's grown with more families running for the survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones. And there's still time to register for the race. It's happening on Saturday. If you use the code KSET, you will get $5 off your registration fee. And you can look for that link on our website at KSET.com. And that was file video of you running. Yes. Did you see yeah. it this time? I, well, my mom told me about it. She yeah. was like, yeah, that was you. That was you. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's go outside with uh, live cam. 77 degrees and uh, bright sunshine on the last day of summer 2022. Yeah, the last day tomorrow will be the first mm -hmm. full day of fall. And, you know, it's like right on time. We've had these record setting temperatures, at least potentially. I think tomorrow could be our hottest day. If you're taking the dog out for a walk. You've got a couple more hours left before it gets uh, not so nice outside. Uh, take a look at this picture. This was one sent in for Fido's forecast. This is Rambo, small but mighty. We know how those chihuahuas roll. I love it. And if uh, you're uh, heading out this morning, it'll be sunny, 80 degrees. Uh, that's kind of where we are right now. And then 87 by 11 o'clock and then into the 90s pretty quickly right after lunch. That's when it gets not so nice and those paws can burn on the sidewalk or pavement. Pollen count is in. Ragweed moved up to the moderate category. It's 100. It's our typical fall allergens here, but ragweed moving to the top. Molds, pigweed, and grass also on the list today. As we look across the state, there is a frontal boundary trying to sink into the uh, panhandle, but it's not going to make it down here. It stays well to our north. Look at the number in Amarillo, though, 55 this morning. Eventually, eventually we will get a front through here, but it takes until Monday for that to happen. We'll look at the extended forecast, time that out for you. We've also got the latest drought monitor coming in. That's uh, here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. We are learning more about why the U.S. Department of Homeland Security is seeing an influx of individuals, flee, individuals rather, fleeing from Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. Alyssa Cole spoke with experts and migrants, and they told her one of the reasons for the inundation is a bigger than politics or crime. This week, data released from the Department of Homeland Security reflects a unique increase in the number of asylum seekers from three Latin American countries. It shows a 175% increase in individuals seeking refuge from Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. You're talking about people who are fleeing regimes that are less than friendly to the United States. UTSA political science professor John Taylor says a big reason why we're seeing migrants from those countries now could be tied to current Biden administration policy. Mexico agreed to not allow migrants from Honduras, from Honduras, from El Salvador, and from and, and from Central America to come to the United States. Ah, but there's nothing in the agreement about Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela. We also spoke with an economics professor, and he tells us inflation in other countries could also be a big push factor in migrants seeking refuge in the United States. Venezuela has, has had enormous inflation rates, thousands of percent, so um, people flee that kind of situation. It's a big part of the reason why Joel Maldonado fled to Texas from Venezuela with his wife and small daughter. He says $12 a week. You can't even survive on that. 
Who is going to survive on $12? He tells us his daily salary in Venezuela was only enough to buy two groceries. He says one day of work in Venezuela, $1 for rice, $1 for flour, so $2 daily. Another man we spoke to, also from the same country, tells us crime was a driving factor, forcing him to leave his home. But his hopes are to make a better life here. He says everybody has a right to an opportunity to live well. As of now, the Biden administration has not announced any plans to approach this influx differently compared to others in the past. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. And back to one of the top stories today, the rise in interest rates again. But how will this really affect us? Camelia Juarez gives us a look. Aggressive action from the Fed. Yesterday, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell announcing the fifth consecutive interest rate hike this year. The FOMC raised its policy interest rate by three quarters of a percentage point. Economists aren't surprised and expect more rate increases ahead of us. The Fed taking drastic action to slam the brakes on the hot economy and historic inflation. They're obviously very concerned about inflation and raising rates very aggressively to slow the economy's growth rate down to try to quell that inflation. Higher interest rates means higher borrowing costs for all Americans on their credit cards, cars, student student loans, and their homes, where mortgage rates have already topped 6%. It's also hitting retirement savings. What's happening right now should be a warning bell that get out of debt that you have and don't take on as much debt because whatever you take on, it's going to cost you more. Experts say most consumers will feel the pain. And for those living paycheck to paycheck, it could mean making difficult decisions. Personal finance author Michelle Singletary recommends holding off on big purchases until the overheated economy stabilizes. Is this the right time? Can you wait before you jump into the housing market or to buy that new car? Because it's going to cost you more. The Fed's move does have a silver lining for some. Economist Mark Zandi says higher rates could benefit savers. Ultimately, this should be a plus for you because you'll get a higher rate on that. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. 939, 79 degrees. You're watching GMSA at night. And this next story, you just have to hear for yourself. Do you know you're doing that or just all comes out? <laughs> Maybe it just all comes out. How cute. So we come back, a heartwarming story of a young boy with autism who has shocked his family and thousands of other people with his self-taught piano skills. Can't wait to see this story. 943, welcome back. A young boy in Colorado is a musical genius. But his talent was a hidden gift for the first 10 years of his life. He and his family spoke with Denver reporter Danny New to share his story and his gift. It's really not often that a 10-year-old can give keyboard lessons to himself. One day I was here watching the news when I heard him play something on, there's a small keyboard down the basement. So I grabbed my phone and went down there and I'm like, dude, play that again. This was in February of last year when Jude, who has autism, made his father realize that his youngest son could basically hear anything and then figure out how to play it immediately. <laughs> Even our station jingle. Ah, oh, that changes octaves now. So you can imagine the reaction from his parents. The Lord is good. Especially for his father, who was a musician in his home country of Ghana before moving to America. I had that dream of being able to play for a big on a big stage, but I got here, I couldn't do that. So I'm like, okay, then I want the kids to do it. Yeah, so this is uh, him. But Jude's unexpected virtuosity also felt like a blessing because of his health problems early in life. He looked tiny with all those machines going off. That must have been horrible. Yes. Looking. Jude was born with low oxygen levels and had to have heart surgery as a baby to repair a hole. He even needed a feeding tube in his stomach until he was eight. But Jude is a fighter and has thankfully mostly recovered now. As you can tell, it's kind of hard to break his spirit. Do you know you're doing that or just all comes out? <laughs> Maybe it just all comes out. <laughs> 
now at 11 years old, Jude is all over YouTube, he plays weddings, he's the lead keyboardist at their church in Aurora, and... That's him. He'll even jam with beginners. But no matter how many accolades he racks up in his young and sudden career as a maestro, their family can only see this one way. Looking at his situation, also his diagnosis, how he was born in Virginia and now, the way he's played, yeah, it's, it's just God alone. It's a miracle. Everybody's smiling watching yes. this story. That was Danny New reporting in Colorado. So cute. I love his laugh. And Jude's YouTube page has more than 6,000 followers. Not surprising at all. Not at all. Amazing kiddo. 945 right now. Justin is back with a drought report. That's incredible. Okay, yeah, so the, the drought continues to set in, right? We have uh, a dry spell underway, and it's starting to get worse again. We really started to dig out of this. And now we're headed right back into it. So that was last week. This is this week. Notice there's not a whole lot of change, but there is a little bit and it's going the wrong way. We're seeing the severe drought starting to kick back in a little bit. And then here around San Antonio, we remain in an extreme drought. Those up around New Braunfels, exceptional drought, that maroon color. And uh, rain would be a great thing. I don't see much of it in the seven day at all. Medina Lake, 7.7% full. It's not as low as it was back in that 2011 and 2014 range, but we're getting close. It's down 13.7 feet over the last three months. As we go outside for you, there's not even a cloud in the sky to help create any rain. Today is going to be a sunny day, 75 degrees at the airport. We started off at 70 this morning with some lower dew points. The dew points have climbed a little bit, but they fall back down this afternoon, and we get more of a dry heat later today. 76 in Honda, 72 Kerrville, 77 Pleasanton. We're up to 81 already in Gonzales and around Bear County, starting to get close to 80, especially down towards Stinson. It is 80 right now in Divine. KSAT 12 hour forecast, 90 by noon time. We're up around 98 for high temperature today. Winds will be light and variable, variable but they'll likely sw switch to the south and east by late this afternoon and this evening. And then tonight, we drop down to about 87 by 9 p.m. with clear skies. Heat high is really in control here, and the temperatures across the state this afternoon, we're up around 98, most places in the 90s here around Texas, with the exception being the uh, panhandle where we showed you that frontal boundary is uh, moving south and bringing some cooler air there. By tomorrow, 99. The record is 99 for tomorrow, so we're going to be awful close. We could tie it. And if we hit 100, which is possible, then we would also tie the record for most 100 degree days. We get a little bit of a change this weekend. Area of low pressure moves into Mexico. High moves out of the way. We get some clouds thrown in our direction, and that brings down temperatures slightly. But we add some humidity over the weekend, so it's all a trade off here. Dry uh, today and tomorrow, and then Saturday, notice the dew point comes up, 65. That's in the humid territory. And then as we head into next week, this is when things really dry out. We get a frontal boundary, I think, during the day on Monday. And by Tuesday and Wednesday, dew points could be in the 40s. That is the driest air we've seen in a long, long time, which means we'll see some cool mornings, great evenings, but still some warm afternoons. In the tropics, we got to touch on this one more time. Hurricane Fiona is moving away. It's a strong hurricane, but it probably uh, only brushes by Bermuda. It's those in Nova Scotia that have to worry about this as we head into the weekend. This is going to combine with the storm system and bring some very heavy rain and gusty winds there. Elsewhere, we have Gaston and then several other waves that have developed here in the Atlantic. Things have really picked up here over the last week in the tropics. But it is this system here in the Caribbean that we really, really do have to watch. Right now, still pretty disorganized, but it uh, will start to get itself together, I think, next couple days. You'll start to see more thunderstorm activity as it moves west and then eventually northwest. That's what the computer models are showing. By Monday morning, this thing is moving towards uh, Mexico or Cuba or somewhere in between. There's still a lot of questions here. We still have to get more data. They're going to be flying planes into this thing. Gets, it puts data into the computer models, which helps us better predict where it's going and how strong it may be. We do think it moves into the Gulf by the middle part of next week, but there's still some questions there. And I would say the entire Gulf, the entire, the entire Gulf Coast should keep close watch on this uh, because this forecast is going to change over time. But that's kind of the general idea as we think uh, that by the middle part of next week, it is moving into the Gulf of Mexico. For us, 95 degrees Saturday, 96 Sunday. There's that frontal boundary Monday. Small, small chance for a shower with it. I'm not too hopeful, but it does again dry us out Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll see highs in the low 90s, but morning lows 
in the 60s. Next week looks pretty nice. Which do you guys yeah. like better for today? Almost autumn or false fall? Almost autumn. Almost autumn. We'll be positive. Yes. Yeah, okay. almost autumn. Okay. Yeah. I was leaning towards false fall, but that's just <laughs> that's the first two. <laughs> 950, 79 degrees. And we're going to check back in with David Sears after the break as we get ready for the big give. One of the most successful giving days in the country kicks off later today. The Big Give helps donors support local nonprofits in South Central Texas. And David Sears is out in Spring Branch with more. Good morning, David. We are at the Screaming Goat, but it's too early to start screaming just yet. And we're going to introduce you to some of the goats here in just a minute because there are really live goats here at the Screaming Goat. This is Jenny and J.D. Scott. They are the owners of the Screaming Goat. And, of course, this is the Big Give Day. Actually starts about 6 o'clock. they got to jump on things this morning starting at 9 o'clock when they open their doors. First off, Jenny, just tell me why it's so important for you guys to be a part of the Big Give. Awesome. Yes. Well, we have a very personal journey of adopting children from foster care, so we understand how hard that journey for those kiddos that come from hard places is. And so it's important to us as an organization to support local organizations that work with kids that come from hard places. So that, that personal connection, is that why you uh, are affiliated with SJRC yes, Texas? Absolutely. And what kind of organization are they and why so important to be a part of, of, their, of their organization as well? They work with kids that come from trauma. Um, they work with helping ki uh, families reunify and, um, you know, place kids in foster care and hopefully adoption ultimately. All right, J.D., what do you have going on today? Just kick off this big give. So today we have... Uh, Tipsy Trivia starts at 6 o'clock, and that's this evening sponsored by Shiner Beer. And then we also have a live music shawl revolver. And so hopefully we can drive a lot of sales so we can give a lot back to SGRC. Why is it so important for organizations to, to take part in Big Give, not just individuals, but organizations like yours to take part in, the, in a day like today? Well, I mean, we're, we're all, like, challenged, you know, biblically to give I mean, father the fatherless and so this gives us an opportunity to to support an organization that you know is already has, has the infrastructure in place to to really go out and get those kids in homes that that can be fathered and mothered by you know and just who knows who they're going to be in the future that's what i always think about you know what's that kid going to turn into important day big day for a lot of people around san antonio and south texas for the big give and it's also a day to have a little fun while you're giving so if you come out here to the scream and go look there's goats so uh tell me the name of these goats so far so we have winifer and then we have moo and birdie and then we have tom brady's girlfriend up here which is giselle and then tom tom actually lives in the back pen with uh randy and then we have uh what was the other we have uh so Tom, uh, Winifred, Birdie, Giselle, and Moo. So the goat is a goat. All right, guys, back to you. So the big give officially starts at 6, but it's going on right now at the Scream and Go here off of 46 and 281. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day, guys.